Before a lot of those protests were breaking out, I was watching a documentary or a TED Talk or something, this guy from the ACLU talking about the Tulsa City Massacre and when Confederate statues were being put up and where they were being put up and who was paying. And just learning things that yeah. I had never been taught before. And it was really kind of mind blowing. So having these events over the last couple of years and realizing, you know, I don't listen to hip hop. I love music, but I've never listened to hip hop. But why? Like why, why? It's wildly popular. People love it. Why have I never listened to it? And I started to kind of pick my own brain and think, there's no reason here. There's no reason, at least that's my reason. I feel like the reason why I don't listen to hip hop are other people's reasons that have somehow snuck into my head and just laid dormant for years. And so that's really where it all came from. It's like, you know what? No, I'm going to do this. What's up, everybody? My name is Brazil, and welcome to my podcast. Today, I'm really excited for this guest because he represents a journey that I've been on YouTube for a couple years now, and that is watching reaction videos. It is a craze. I don't think anybody ever planned for this to happen, but it is a huge craze on YouTube to watch other people experiencing things, whether that's they're listening to songs, watching movies, comedies, whatever. And um, I've been particularly interested in videos of people that don't normally listen to hip hop going through that journey. Something about it is just so intriguing to me. Like it makes me feel like I'm reliving these experiences all over again. And there's one person in particular who the way he breaks down what he hears in the records, I really appreciate. And even the song that he said is his favorite song from my favorite artist, I agree with why he did it. And I think his analytical mind and the way he's experiencing it is so beautiful. And I'm happy to have him on. This is Mr. Bob the Pop Pop. <laughs> Dude, that was one of the best introductions I've ever heard in my life, man. That was awesome. Awesome. I feel like honored to be here. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> man, let's get right into it. What album did you listen to today? Today was 808s and Heartbreak by Kanye West. And I just got done with it. I don't know, like 45 minutes. I'm honestly still like, <laughs> recovering from Pinocchio's story like god damn dude that, that I, I still am like I had to take a break from recording and, and go over there and I honestly like Pinocchio's story specifically right now I can't even really talk about it because it's just a gut punch man what a gut punch yeah. but uh, yeah I finished that like 45 minutes ago first time listen ever uh, 808's and Heartbreak what did it represent like you've been listening to the Kanye journey right what was the first Kanye album you heard the first one I heard was College Dropout. Oh, um, so you started at the beginning, like you went in well, order. Well, sort of, because I did College Dropout, and I remember when I did that reaction, I remember thinking, okay, this is pretty cool, you know, decent album. But at the end, I told the people who were watching, I said, you know, it feels safe. It felt a little restrained. Like it felt like, because at that time, I didn't know Kanye very well. It felt like Kanye wasn't really allowed to be Kanye. It almost felt like a corporate version of Kanye or something like that, where it's like, no, no, don't experiment too much. Keep it within the boundaries of, you know, traditional music, and then we'll, you know, see how it goes. And by the way, can the camera point down a bit? Oh, you know what? Yeah. That would be nice. I just realized we don't have that. Uh, there we go. I don't know if it'll st uh, There we go. Is that better? Perf way better. There we okay. go. All right. So go on. So you were listening to the first Kanye album, The College yeah, Dropout? Yeah, The so College Dropout. And, and when I said that, that it felt safe, like I was expected to be a little bit more raw and more you know, loud than ever, everyone. I mean, across the board, I've never seen so many suggestions or requests for an album reaction to Yeezus. You got to listen to Yeezus. Yeezus, Yeezus. Just like, okay, oh. I remember because right. you were asking for anger. You were hoping that there would be yeah. some more anger in there. Yeah, yeah. And so when I listened to Yeezus, I went, oh, okay. This is, this is what I was expecting. Just raw, distorted sound, loud vocals, drum beats. I mean, that, that really, really blew me away. Yeezus did. And then I just continued on from there with late registration and graduation and going into this year, because Kanye is such a huge artist, obviously everybody knows him, everybody pays attention to him if they want to or not. I said, okay, one album a month will be a Kanye album and we'll just slowly work through all of his albums until we get to the end. Why do you think there's such a craze and demand about Kanye's music? Well, I'm, I'm slowly learning that, which has been fun because I really knew nothing about the guy. And 
there's another YouTube channel. I don't know if you've seen them. I can never remember exactly. It's like JD signifier or RD signifier or something like that. He's got this breakdown of Kanye and his, and his uh, professional life and all that. And he has this great arc, you know, Kanye, the person, Kanye, the artist. And from what I understand, when he came into hip hop, he was doing something at the time that was very new to hip hop in terms of just kind of being a normal person and not really being, I don't want to say the word stereotype necessarily, but he just came in saying, Hey, you know, I've got concerns and I've got fears and no, I'm not necessarily the toughest guy on the planet and I'm not going to pretend to be the toughest guy on the planet. And he just focused on making good music and, and good lyrics. And, and that was it. And I mean, I'm certainly no expert on Kanye, that's for sure. But it seems like from what people have said in comments, what his music has done, how his music has constantly evolved, how hip hop has evolved since then. It seems like that's really what Kanye did to the genre. He just changed it. Yeah, absolutely. And what made you want to start this journey doing reactions and why hip hop? Actually, you know, I was my one of my cousins just found out about my channel a week ago. And she was texting me and she was all excited because she listened to some hip hop. And uh, she asked me the same question. I told her, you know, a couple of years ago, I, she lives down in L.A. She she lives in. Uh, well, she was in Koreatown for a while, but I went to visit her. I'm not a city person. <laughs> I don't like going to L.A. I hate driving right. through there. Like it's always a nightmare for me. I'm just trying to get to San Diego <laughs> when I go through there. I don't want to be there. But she's like, no, come visit. You know, I'll take you around all these different little places right. in, in Koreatown and. It was a lot of fun. We had a nice little bar hopping night. And I remember one place, I don't remember the name, but it was this cool thing where they had this outside area. And it was like wedged between these two buildings, but they had these little chairs and tables set up and candles. And it was just cool. Like it was really cool. As the night goes on, you know, it's getting later. We're walking back to her apartment, just kind of, you know, go to sleep basically. And we go by a little liquor store and she's like, did you want to get like a six pack or something? I'm like, yeah, sure. And we walk in. Well, we get to the outside and some of the lights are off and there's some people standing outside and there's this little old lady and she's like, you know, telling people they can't come in. And I'm like, oh, that's too bad. We just missed it. Like you guys just closed. I just wanted to get a six pack of beer. And she's like, oh, no, no, you come in, you come in. You're okay. And I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. And I tell my cousin, that's nice. You know, that she let us in and she goes, yeah, it's because you're white. And I went, oh, and I looked around and all of the people that were not being let in were not white. And I went, oh, interesting. So I came face to face with my own white privilege for the first time. No longer was it just a buzzword that people were tossing around. No longer was it this thing that people tried to ridicule or, or heave upon me or whatever. Like, no shit. I got let in because I was white and that was it. And that was an interesting experience for me to really just just have that happen. So bold in front of my face. Yes. And, you know, this was before the pandemic happened. This was before protests. This was before, I mean, cops have been killing black people for decades, unfortunately, but before a lot of those protests were breaking out. And I remember during the pandemic, I was watching, it was like a, a documentary or a TED talk or something. This guy from the ACLU talking about the history of America and learning about things like the Tulsa city massacre and when Confederate statues were being put up and where they were being put up and who was paying and just learning things that yeah. I had never been taught before about my country's history and racism that exists within history and this country. And it was really kind of mind blowing because I've never really experienced racism firsthand. My, my family, they're not really, you know, I'd say they're a little bit prejudiced here and there, but they're good people. They're not racist, you know, living in the California, California is definitely like a melting pot. Yeah. It, I mean, racism is here, but it's, it's another, nothing I've ever really fully experienced. So having these events over the last couple of years and realizing, you know, I don't listen to hip hop. I love music, but I've never listened to hip hop. But why? Like why, why? It's wildly popular. People love it why have I never listened to it? And I started to kind of pick my own brain and think there's no reason here. There's no reason, at least that's my reason. I feel like the reason why I don't listen to hip hop are other people's reasons that have somehow snuck into my head and just laid dormant for years. 
And so that's really where it all came from. It's like, you know what? No, I'm going to do this. Reaction channels, like you're saying, reaction channels is this huge thing on YouTube. I've seen so many channels. Like I listen to rock. I love watching people listen to rock for the first time and, and watching them just have their mind blown by riffs and, and screams and drums and all this. It's just fucking great. I love it. I love it. And I thought, you know, I'll go the other way. I'll be a rocker and I'll dive into hip hop blind and, and see where it goes. Wow. And how did you land on Kanye? Kanye was kind of just the natural evolution of suggestions coming in. Cause I started the very first video I did was Lil Nas X call me by your name. I think is the name. Okay. Or, yeah. I did that video. Cause I remember that being like a huge controversy at the time with him lap dancing on the devil or whatever. Understandable controversy in my opinion, but you know, whatever. Right. And then I got a couple suggestions for um, Tyler, Tyler creator. Yeah. And I started with Tyler, the creator, everyone, you know, they, they had me listen to Yonkers and then it was she and then Tron cat and nightmare. And then eventually I just listened to the whole goblin album. And then they're like, Oh, okay. Now you got to do Wolf. And then now you got to do what was after Wolf cherry yeah. bomb. I think. And I started going through the natural progression of Tyler. And I w basically did all of his music. Did you start listening to hip hop after that incident where you experienced white privilege or no i didn't i didn't before and, that and before that i i had listened to dr dre i like dr dre quite a bit and i listened to a decent amount of eminem although i haven't listened to any of his recent stuff but i'd heard sure. uh you know his earlier albums but really those were the only two hip-hop artists i'd listened to before see this is the part that's so beautiful and thanks for sharing that story because it's i'm seeing it I'm seeing your natural curiosity, you know, and the fact that hip hop music is taking you through a journey to see the perspective of what other people feel like, you know, I think it's a beautiful thing. They say that art is the lie that tells the truth and it like, it, like it, it evokes that, that, that feeling, you know, the feeling is real. And I think you're coming into it with such an open mind. It's beautiful, man. Like every time like you, you post a new one, I'm like, yeah, like it, it, it's, it's <laughs> like, a, a, and then there's this other channel as well with this like the dad and the son that watch it. Yep, and turning the like, tables. Yeah, yep, they're, they're great. great yeah. yeah. And I like yeah. seeing like when they do it to like, you know, moms, like moms react to hip hop and stuff like that. And the opposite way too, you know, where kids now are listening to like Phil Collins and things yeah. that they've never really heard. And yeah. I remember I seen this one clip of these two, these two kids hearing Phil Collins in the air in the night. And when the beat came in, you know, like, yeah. and they were yeah. like, the beat dropped three <laughs> minutes in. Oh my God. It was such an yeah. epic video. Like I get goosebumps just thinking about that. It's, it's, it's funny that I don't think that was ever like a, an intended use of the internet to just let me watch other people listen to music. But it, there's something so beautiful about that. Cause then it feels like, especially when people catch the same moments I like. Yeah. And I think too, it's, it's one of those experiences where, we could only listen to an album for the first time one time. And yeah. as soon as you have that moment, it's gone and you never get it back again. And it's almost like you get to sneak a second chance at hearing something for the first time. I like that. that I get a lot of comments from people like that where they say, oh, it's so cool because it felt, I felt like I was hearing it again for the first time. And that, that part I think is really neat. Wow. Who do you like watching on YouTube? What do you consume? Uh, I like turning the tables. They're good. There's another channel. One of the channels that inspired me to really make my channel is one called lost in Vegas. Yeah. And those are two guys. I think they came from the hip hop world and they dove right into metal, right into metal. And they actually have a huge, huge channel. I think they're over a million subscribers, but they're great. George and Ryan. And what's fun is watching them. I get to learn how obsessive the metal crowd can be because Every now and then they'll say, you know, they'll just be talking and expressing their opinion. And one of them will go, I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean like, like, don't, don't pound me in the comments because I accidentally said like so-and-so. And like, <laughs> you can tell the fans are just rabid about who they love and who they think is better or who's heavier or whatever. So it's pretty funny. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to see happen. I think um, we have more in common than we have different. And Absolutely. other people have different experiences. I think at the core level, humans have a lot that they want to connect with. And 
this is such a sneaky little way to do it. Like it it's is. so beautiful. It's like, oh, look at oh, Republican listens to hip hop. Oh, conservative is listening. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. we like yeah. the same stuff. What? We're not I, all enemies. Right. No, I love it. I love and I think that that's a, kind of like a secret agenda I've had with this channel is trying to subconsciously put out this idea that we're very similar, even though we're different and we have you know different opinions and maybe different feelings politically, religiously, whatever. There's a lot more that we have in common than not in common. Yeah. And especially with how, how the world is now, I, I really don't like seeing all this division and I, I don't like like this embattled state the country is in. And I feel like we are fighting each other but we are not our enemy. Like our enemy is someone else, not us. Yeah, I completely agree. <clears throat> That's why I support what you're doing. And I'm such a fan of your channel. And I look forward to seeing all your videos. So I guess, obviously, you know, I'm a huge Kanye fan. So I want to talk to you a lot about that. Sure, <laughs> sure. So you, let, let's talk about what's fresh. 808s. Yeah. What'd you think of it? I liked it. You know, I, I think I was a little overhyped coming in because on the first half, I was slightly underwhelmed now keep in mind i've only listened to it one time i yeah. couldn't even tell you half the tracks right now just because you know you hear an album for the first time you don't remember all of it right away mm -hmm. but when it gets into that second half man it gets really good really good like paranoid was a great track uh street lights i remember really really liking street lights yeah pinocchio's story is of, of course incredible it was a good album and I remember going through the lyrics and it seems like sometimes on the surface, oh, it, you know, he's just singing about this and that. But I feel like if you can peel back a couple layers, he's really, really putting himself out there and how much pain he's in at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. And you have to think about also where were we in music, right? That was 2008, 2007, I think, when that came out. Yeah, I think 2007. Um, I, I think I've learned that there's like a process to hearing I would say Kanye albums, but let's say any album, any good art, right? You have to release expectations from it, right? Because almost every time I've heard a new Kanye album, at the very beginning, I kind of don't like it because it's so yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, right. what? Yeah. We're doing that instead? Yeah. And, then, and then it's like, oh. And then I say, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then like the next day, and then I'm like, oh shit. And then you just realize it's like, oh, we went somewhere so different with it. It's, it's, um, he's not even my favorite rapper. He's my favorite artist. Oh, okay. Who's your favorite rapper? Pure rapping, I would say Jay Z, but more so because of what he represents in the culture. Okay. I would say that, like, for people who are fans of uh, Jordan Peterson, I don't know if you're familiar with, with his work. He's like a big uh, author and. Kind of yeah, speaker. yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he has. You know, he talks about uh, uh, order and chaos, right? Yeah, sure. Jay Z represents order. Kanye represents chaos. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. See, <laughs> Jay Z came in the beginning and he was saying, "No, I'm here to be a businessman." Like in the early '90s, he's like, "I'm not yeah. even a rapper. I'm just doing this because it's a hustle and da da da, and I'm gonna yeah. build my empire." And he stuck true to it. And he's like a cool, calm, collected, strategic thinker, general kind of a guy yeah, absolutely Kanye is like the let's change everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like yo and the balance of those two um it's interesting because I don't think I wouldn't even put Kanye as hip-hop I, I think he is like especially knowing some of the people that work with him what I like about him is that he just makes music it might be channeled through the lens of hip-hop but it's like there's strings like street lights yeah. If you, if you go yeah. to somebody who's never heard hip hop before and you play them street lights, they're going to be like this. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, I kind of felt the same way last week I did Kid Cudi's Man on the Moon 1 album. Yes, I, I, I saw felt that. the same way with that one. I mean, yeah, there's parts where he's rapping and it's certainly hip hop, but there's parts I'm like this is kind of like just a uh, an alternative rock song more than yeah. a rap song. Yeah, Cudi is really good. Cudi he's has good. He has this emotional honesty. Yeah. And, and, and the way he hums is so, it's like he made it like cool to be, and maybe that's not the right way to say it, but to display how much you're suffering. Yeah. In hip hop. Because most of hip hop is like anger as a backlash. It's like, my life sucks. So, ha, I'm here, you know? Yeah. But Cuddy was more like, yo, I'm falling, man. Like, and just, just being honest. Yeah, yeah. Just being honest, man. And I, that album was so great, too, because 
not only like you're saying with the hums and stuff, how he does that, but it just with the sound, like it could almost be an instrumental and he would still capture that feeling of just kind of struggling, but getting by head down, you know, one day at a time type of feeling, man. It, it, some of those sounds are fantastic that he made. Yeah. Man on the Moon was such an incredible album. I wonder what it must have been like to be in the room when they were making it. Like, I wonder if they know when they're making it, like, oh, this is the one. <laughs> right. Like, you know? I don't, I don't know. I've, I mean, I've never been in a recording session before. I think it'd be cool to see, but I'm sure there are times when you go, oh, shit, we're making magic right now. Like, this is, this is yeah. going to be something special. Yeah, it's like they just tune into this right frequency of emotion. And I feel like that's what makes the best art is that it has to be true to the artist. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And the yeah. truer it is for them, then we can choose to dive in there to feel it with them. But yeah. you can't pretend to make art for everybody. It's like if you're going through pain, make make it painful. Yeah. Make it dark. Make it angry. Whatever it is. Yeah, and Cuddy boy on Man on the Moon 2, like, oh shit. <laughs> He's going there. And I've heard I haven't listened to anything beyond those two albums, but I've heard like was it Wizard and and Speeding Bullet to Heaven? I guess those just get really, really dark. Yeah. It's like man. Do you actually listen to hip hop outside of the reaction channels now? I do. Like so, I mean, for those of you who are, you know, are unaware of my cycle, it's it what's been cool with the channel is it's slowly evolved into this other thing where I do a reaction on Friday and then I spend the whole week with that album. And then I do an additional thoughts video like Wednesday or Thursday, just talking about, okay, I listened to it six, seven more times. I've started watching like documentaries, live performances, music videos during my own time to fully explore the album and, and, and stuff like that. And so, yeah, now I do. And it's really cool because six months ago, no, I didn't listen to hip hop at all. But I have a I have playlists now that I've made. I'll put on different albums. I won't even put on album. I'll skip to like track eight. You know, yeah. like I'll, I'll throw on Death Grips Money Store and I'll go to the last track Hacker. I love Hacker. That's a great one. Or... Uh, I love uh, my my favorite. I guess he's my favorite artist. I guess or rapper or both. But MF Doom, I fucking uh, loved Mad Villainy. I loved Mad Villainy. So I'll put on Great Day because that's a great song to start your day. Just I haven't heard a lot of day. MF Doom. What would you recommend be my first listen to MF Doom? Ma if you haven't listened to the Mad Villainy album, check that one out. That one's really good. I really enjoyed yeah. that one a lot. MF Doom, Mad Villainy. Yeah, I think I think in that album he calls himself Mad Villain. He has apparently all these different alter ego names and stuff like that. I don't fully understand them. I'm not an expert on MF Doom, but I love oh, his Matt style. Villainy. I see it here. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. This is the one with the famous with the yeah. black and white photo with the with the mask. Yeah. Well, he's what great. Has, you said you used to listen to Dr. Dre and Eminem, right? Growing up, did your friends listen to hip hop? Were you just more drawn to rock, or like my my dad listened to rock all the time, so I I got into rock through him. Um, really, no one else. No one else really listened to music. I mean, my dad did and my mom did, but when I think about other other people in my life when I was younger, there wasn't really a lot of people that listened to music constantly. My dad listened to music constantly. And I have a lot of memories as a kid because he would take me, we'd go skiing or we'd go on you know hiking trips and stuff like that. And he'd throw in these tapes, these mixtapes that he had all the time. Yeah. And uh I still have memories. Like there are certain rock songs that are associated specifically to skiing. Like if yes. I hear this song, I'm going skiing. Like it's just yes. ingrained in there. It's great. But in terms of hip hop, nobody listened to it. I, I didn't have anybody in my life that listened to rap, hip hop, friends, not even really. I had one friend in high school that used to listen to uh, Cypress Hill and he would just smoke pot and listen yeah. to Cypress Hill constantly. <laughs> <laughs> but really that was it. So not a lot of exposure, you know, getting into Dre, getting into Eminem, I don't really remember why I did other than it's like, well, let's try these guys out because they're they're big and there's got to be a reason why people like them. So, yeah, I was going to ask from the outside looking in, what was your up until recently? What was your perception of hip hop? The by what was your biased view? If it was by like, what was your. Like, you didn't know. Right. Right. And really, my perception of hip hop up until six months ago was total bullshit. It really, I mean, honestly, it's total bullshit. That's what's been so great about this is I'm constantly dispelling misconceptions that I've had. And in some ways, it's almost been scary because I'm realizing I've had these somewhat firm ideas and then finding out this is not my idea. Like this did not, 
somehow this got into my head. This was not created inside of my mind. It was just put there. Because I used to think hip hop was all about, you know, it's about gangs. It's about violence. It's about shooting people. It's about stealing their chains. It's about fucking bitches. It's about partying. It's about like, that's it. And while some of those elements do exist in hip hop, I find almost constantly the opposite is true. Like it is, it is almost hard to find a song that is specific about just those things. Yeah. You know, like more so it's telling a story of trying to survive in this kind of environment or the struggle of dealing with poverty and dealing with family members who are addicted to drugs and, and trying to get out of an environment where it's just crime ridden and there's no fucking hope or no end in sight. You know, it's just, it's incredible. I think the Illmatic album by Nas, Mm. that was the first one I remember where Nas is such a great storyteller in just describing that environment and making it yes. very uh, like a visceral experience. There's like college courses on Nas albums. I believe it. Yeah. And I think at you know, Harvard or something, there's like a, a hip hop studies and they go through Nas albums. Yeah. Yeah. And Kendrick Lamar too is another one. Mm. Good Kid, Mad City, To Pimp a Butterfly. Both of those albums are just incredible, incredible stories. And so it's been fantastic for me to, to, not only if I enjoy the music, I mean, I like the music as well, but to, to get into these lyrics and find out these guys are great writers, they're great storytellers, they have incredible detail, they're, the pain and the struggle that they're going through is, is unbelievable. It's just, it's fantastic. It's fantastic music. Why do you think the mainstream media presented only the worst parts of hip hop for so long? I think it's a great way to keep people divided, honestly. I think it, it allows two separate cultures to remain separate because I think if, if it ever got to the point where all of us got together and realized who our enemies are in terms of corporate media, politicians, in my opinion, they don't serve yeah. us anymore, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the power structures that exist now, if the, if, the, the, if the rest of us really got together and realized we're not our enemies, but we're we're on each other's side, then there'd be a big problem for them. <laughs> Not for us, but for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they see it now. And I think that's why they're trying to come after it. And, and uh, they're doing a lot of hit jobs right now on Powerful yes, Voices. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, they're, they're afraid of the numbers, man. It's, um, people are waking up. You know, yeah. the, it's not, we're not so binary when it comes to politics. Like people are all over the place. Like I have some beliefs that are more liberal, some beliefs that are more conservative. Like I'm an, like I've been free, yeah. like it just has to make sense to me. Like I'm not going to be all the way with one team just for, just for the sake of it being a team. Right. You right. know, on, on, on right or left. I think um, I'm really grateful for the internet and the fact that I'm able to hear such a diverse range of voices. Right. If you think about it back in the day, if uh, two people were having a very insightful conversation by the fire, unless it was like on national TV, nobody else got to hear it. Right. That was the yeah. end of that conversation. All the beauty of it lived and died in that moment, which is special. But now I can hear two people <laughs> having a fire conversation that incites me while I'm walking my dog here in California. They could be somewhere in a different country even. And now I think there's so much of that happening I'm imagining like a big neural network of like the whole yeah. world. Everybody's now tuning in because it used to be like a one-to-many communication right. style, right? It's right. like only had like these, these a few major broadcasting channels and they were the only ones approving messages because even from a technology standpoint, you couldn't broadcast because it was you didn't have cameras and, and, right. and that kind of stuff, right? Like for – that were that good. But now everybody can do it. Now the ideas are just – And not only could everybody do it, but now we can have – long form in-depth discussions instead of two minute sound bites where someone gets to speak for 47 seconds and then someone else gets 23 seconds and then it's over. Like that format is so terrible for critical thought, so terrible for trying to take apart, you know, flawed arguments and things like that. Now you can have people just sit for 90 minutes and talk and really get into the details of what has gone wrong, what is working, what's not working, yeah. You know, what's what's the truth and what isn't the truth? Right now, that's just strictly not allowed on mainstream media. Like, no, here's here's two minutes. Here's what you must believe. We gotta go to commercial. That's it. Yeah. It's and now everybody's seeing it. Now they like, are. I think so too. 
on every side, you know, yeah. because they're trying to make it seem like we're just here, but then everybody's looking around like, no, 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 that format. Yeah. I don't think those companies are going to survive if they don't go a long format. I, I hope they don't survive at all. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I have no respect for any of the corporate media outlets at all. None of them. I don't yeah. trust any of them. I mean, it, it's, it's a weird time because I think so often people say, oh, we're in the information age, but I, I think we're in the misinformation age. And I think it's coming from every direction. And it's, it's hard because, you know, on one hand, I would like to believe that corporate media has our interests in, in mind, you know, like they, they would actually want to practice proper journalism and just give us objective facts, but they don't. They don't. And to me, the biggest lie is the lie of omission. It's not like they're going out there telling us directly lies, but they are not telling us certain things that are true so that a story seems a certain way. And yeah. it's all just implied. Yeah. Like, so much framing. Yes. Framing. Yes. So much of it. Um, <laughs> it's funny because as a, as a video creator, you know, I know how much these things affect like headlines, what you title a video, you know, you're yes. making videos, the yeah. thumbnail you choose, right? Is your face happy or is your face sad? Exactly. Then, you know, every, you know, sometimes in the morning I'll, I'll wake up and I'll check the front page of both. I'll go like CNN, Fox News, and I'll just like see them side by side. It's yeah. just so interesting how easily observable you could see, oh, this person has a frowny face. Hmm. Bad. And then bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, it's like so simple. It's like right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think like I agree with what you're saying. I think generally speaking, people are starting to realize, oh, a lot of this is just bullshit. It's pure bullshit. Yeah, because I think what's great about long form conversation is that it's way harder to hide. It is. It like, is. You can bullshit a two minute segment. You can come yeah. with a prepared statement and you can just stay strong in the frame. And if you've got an audience, you just say a zinger at the end and everybody goes, oh, yes, great. <laughs> you know, and just cut the commercial. But in a you know, two, three hour podcast or whatever, it's like you get to see what somebody's really all about. Absolutely. And there's chance for pushback. Like if somebody says something that's just blatantly wrong, the other person can go, hold up. What are, you, what are you talking about? That's not right. And, and then they have to try and, I don't know, either weasel out of it <laughs> or just admit the fact that they were wrong. Which, you know, that's another thing that is strangely absent from corporate media, for sure, is this idea of, oh, I made a mistake. I, I was wrong. Like, that's a normal thing. People make mistakes. They, they misunderstand a statement, they misread data, whatever. Like we can be wrong. We can do things incorrectly. That's that's extremely normal for humans to do. Yeah. But right now there's this idea of, oh, you made a mistake. Oh, you're not wrong. You're bad. You're right. bad. And you must be exiled now because of it. And it's total bullshit. Yeah, regardless of even what you feel about that subject that they're talking about, the fact that they're not having those conversations of we were wrong, let's discuss, hmm, who else could be right about this, right? The fact that that version of a conversation isn't even happening, regardless of the subject, right? The subject could be race, it could be politics, it could be money, it could be whatever. But it is very much like, here's the narrative that we agree with on this side, and we're just going to feed it to you. Yep. And, and only bring it. the people that support it. Yep. Yeah. And I, I don't know. it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it seems, it feels like we're just heading down this road of you can only exist if you stay within the box of the pre approved paradigm. And if you ever go outside that box, then you're just removed from public life for whatever reason. And, and it's ridiculous. It, not only is it ridiculous in the sense of people should be learning and growing and evolving their opinions over time, but just this idea of, well, I can't even push back against your concept. Like you have a concept that is the approved concept and now I can't even challenge it. I can't even ask a question about it. No, because you're wrong. You'd be wrong. That's bullshit. It's very bratty. It gives yeah. me very bratty vibes. That's a it great. Give, it, like, like spoiled <laughs> bratty vibes. I love it. I, that's a great description. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> no, can't even talk about it. Well, and now, I mean, that's a great description too, because it plays so well into the tantrums that corporate media are throwing. They're just freaking out over the fact that people like Joe Rogan are crushing them when it comes to views, listeners, what have you. That these long form podcasts 
are doing their job better. That independent media, like I don't know who all you watch, but you know, I I I, I watch Joe all the time. They're going, they're trying to take my man down. They're trying to know? take him down. I'm That's not a not huge, happening. Yeah, I'm not a huge Rogan fan, but you know, I don't believe the bullshit that they're trying to push right now. Like it's to me, it's very clear. It's it's a uh what would you call it? like an online assassination more or less you know yeah and and he's openly admitted to the things that he's done wrong and he's being vulnerable and he's yeah. first of all like he, the community spoke out you know like if you follow any prominent black figures mm -hmm. that that are surrounded with joe like they know who he really is he fucked up he yeah. shouldn't have said those things, and he sure. owned it. And that goes back to what we were saying, right? That video of him saying, hey, I fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we're asking for. That's it. Right? That's and, it. And they were like, no, no, don't trust him. He's apologizing. He's yeah. re recognizing that he's saying that, like, hey, he's not a perfect person, but he's curious, you know, and he wants to have these conversations and share them with the world. What's wrong with that? What's so scary about that? Yeah, and how strange that, that, generally speaking, it seems like the people that consider themselves to be progressive are also the ones that say, if you made a mistake 14 years ago, you're not allowed to progress as a person and change and improve. No, instead, you just must be condemned. And that's yeah. it. There's no growth allowed. You just must be condemned. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because progressives aren't allowing for progression. Right. It's kind of strange to me. <laughs> I don't really get it. I don't get it at all. Did listening to hip hop, um, or maybe okay, how did listening to hip hop ch change your perspective? I guess on the black struggle. That's a great question, and, and um, the narrative around it, right? Because there's many ways to look at it. Yeah, and, and I see it from so many different angles. But I want to, from your perspective, hearing yeah. these lyrics, at least from an emotional level, did it change or? It made it a lot more real, you know, because I can, I can sit here in my nice house and, and, you know, I can read something on the internet or, or I can he see an interview on TV or whatever of somebody having these issues, but there's something about music and getting into lyrics and the way people use their vocals and the combinations of sounds. And it just made it so much more real. Like Good Kid, Mad City, that album, man, Kendrick paints it so well. And it connected with me so well because he has in that album those different voicemails from his parents where they're calling him. And, you know, they're calling him about this, calling him about that. And it made me connect as a parent. Mm. It made me think of my son trying to exist in an environment like that. It was fucking heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. And so it put me there. He really put me there. And now I don't think that that makes me oh, I fully understand what it's like. No, I have no idea what it's, what it's like, but I got an idea. Like, I got an idea, and it, it just, it makes it very real. And so, and there's also kind of the mosaic effect, too. You know, you've got one artist and an album and another one and another one, and slowly but surely this, this painting gets filled in of all these different stories, and it's like, it's real. And it's strange because on a conceptual level, it's easy for me to say, yeah, I know it's real, but I don't know. I have I've never experienced that. I can't have full understanding of that kind of struggle. Like if I get pulled over by the cops, I'm annoyed. I'm not scared. I'm just annoyed, you know? And, and half the time I get pulled over by the cops, nothing even happens anyway. They just, Hey, slow down, whatever. You know, the, the, what the couple of years ago, that guy in Minnesota that had the, he had his, his gun in his glove box where, I think that was Minnesota. Yeah, yeah I think so. And the cops just blew him away. And he told them, I, I have a gun in there. And they told him, you know, I don't remember all the details right now off the yeah. top of my head, but they basically just blew this guy away. And then what was it a week ago? What, a mirror lock or whatever? He got smoked in Minneapolis because they did a no-knock raid in his house. He's sleeping on his couch in his house with his own weapon, which you're allowed to do. And they just fucking blew him away. Like, what the hell is going on? Man, this is ridiculous. And so I think recently... Hearing, hearing all these albums and these stories told and then pairing it to real events that are happening on a regular basis, especially over the last couple of years, it's like, holy shit, man. I'm, I'm really starting to see a lot of the problems that I never saw before because I didn't fully understand that they existed how they do. Yeah, that's so amazing. Like everything you said right there um, gave me goosebumps. 
because that's the power of art. It is. It is the power of art. Yeah, it's incredible. You know, because like you said, you can logically know something exists, right? It's like it's like you can know about swimming or you can jump in the ocean and ice cold right. water and have to swim to shore to save your life. It's like there's you can know about swimming or you can know about swimming. It's two different right. things. And obviously, like you said, you can't live in somebody else's shoes, but, you know, with a good enough art, you can fe- at least feel the frequency that they're on. Yeah. And as a human, you can be like, wow, that's... Regardless of what I think of the geopolitical reasons that might have caused that to happen, people are experiencing pain. Yeah. And two, you know, I, I, every now and then I hear these debates about you know, homelessness and poverty and drug addiction. And <clears throat> I've always had the feeling that these problems that we have, these problems that we often argue about are very complex. And it seems like, generally speaking, especially with corporate media, I love shitting on them whenever I get the chance. <laughs> <laughs> they try to do everything they can to make it not complex. Like, no, it's as simple as just stop being addicted to drugs. It's as simple as, no, just get a job and stop being poor. It's simple, but it's not, it's not simple. And some of these albums have done a great job of, of showing how difficult it is when you live in a, in a poor neighborhood there's violence all around you. There's drug use all around you. You've got family members that are addicted to drugs. You can't get a job because there are no jobs. And if there are jobs, they pay shit money. There's no way out. There's no way out. And hearing these albums has allowed me to like understand that. Whereas before it would be easy to dismiss somebody's struggle as, oh, well, you're not trying hard enough or you just need to get an education or like, like no, these... These could be, maybe maybe those are, are answers that give you a better chance of getting out, of having a decent life. But when you're just at the bottom of the barrel with nothing to help get yourself out of it, I mean, that's it. And I mean, like you're talking about Jay-Z, you know, I'm going to use this to my advantage and manipulate it and, and build my empire. I listened to Reasonable Doubt. Yeah. That's, the only, that's the only album I've listened to him from, from him yet or so far. But um, yeah, he paints that picture. Like, no, man, I'm going to, I'm going to play the game. This is the game. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to play the game and I'm going to get the fuck out. And if I got to sell keys of Coke to do it, fine, I'll do it. That's fine. But I'm going to get my money and I'm going to get out. Um, I don't really remember where I was going with the rest of my, my, my thoughts there, but yeah. 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 Um, I think it's, we were, we were talking about uh, how hip hop widened your perspective on the struggle and I think like what you said, right? Like, yes, people, you can get education, right? There's all these things you can do. There are methods to get out of the struggle, right? But I think we're discounting the fact that the environment, right, can either nourish a person or deprive oh. them yeah. of energy, right? That's mm-hmm. to say, like, what's the point of getting a good job and having a nice house eventually, right? So that you can do what? Nurture your kids, right? So you can create a nice, positive, supportive environment for them to grow, and I think the, the, the mishap in the communication is that, yes, there are strategies to get out of the shitty situation, but you can't discount the fact that they're in a shitty situation, right? Yeah. And then, you know, and then I have this other part of my brain that then says, takes a step back from all of that and says, is this whole conversation first world privilege? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like on one hand, if I zoom out further to like a kid like in a hut in... Oh, yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I, I think that's true. And I think at some point that will always be true to some extent. So I, I like on one hand, I, I, I get what you're saying, but we can't beat ourselves over the head with that either at the same time. Like, this is my situation. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be ashamed or embarrassed of it or, or say that I shouldn't have it or, or whatever, just because somebody else has worse. I don't want somebody else to have worse. But it is what it is kind of a thing, you know, and should I should I take my situation as it is and go, okay, well, because I am privileged and I I am comfortable, I no longer have a right to to discuss what other people are struggling with, because if I do that, if I don't discuss it, if I don't think about it, if I completely ignore it, well, am I how am I achieving anything at all? You know, I and I'm not trying to say that I can sit here and and learn about hip hop and then somewhat learn about these people's experiences and, and what they're going through. <clears throat> and that makes the world a better place. I mean, I'm just, but it, you know. it kind of does 
But it kind of I mean, does because like, I, I imagine some people out there that maybe are in a position of ignorance, right? That they'll look at your channel and be like, hmm, I want to see what this guy is talking about. And then they'll see that you have a perspective on a certain culture and it might widen their perspective and then might them make them at least ask more questions or be more open to it. And I feel like that is helping. That's why I wanted to interview you. Yeah. I, I, I see what you're doing, dude. I like it. I like it. You, 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 you have a good heart. And you're a very smart, talented, successful guy. Now that I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I understand what you really do. No, yeah, um, what I really do. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> you, you're a very smart guy, and you have a good heart, man. And and I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing. Um, I I really want to see your channel continue to grow because there's such a <laughs> so much wealth of experience to go through when it comes to hip hop. I mean, like that channel could be live for decades and you wouldn't run yeah. out of material. I hope so. I hope so. And you know, one of the things I have come to really love about the channel is how positive everything is. Like, I, I appreciate everything you said. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for saying that. But what I also enjoy too is the people who have come with me on this journey and there have been so many amazing comments, so many supportive comments, so many uh, people like cheering me on and, you know, like you're saying, and I've told people before that, you know, had I done this just on my own, let's say I decided, yeah, okay, I'm going to check out hip hop and listen to it and, and do what I'm doing, but do it all in private. Even if I was spending as much time and as attention to it as I am now, I wouldn't have gotten the same experience because there's so many other people that have been involved in the comments Mm. leaving messages, explaining context of stories, context of, of where sound was at the time in hip hop, context of the artists and their lives, all of these aspects of the music that I would not have discovered on my own. It's a completely different experience because of it. Um, and so it has been fantastic. All of the positivity around the channel and, and kind of going back to what you're talking about, you know, I hope, I hope that my openness can be a positive thing to other people. I hope that it does make some kind of difference somehow. That's one of the positives about the internet. I think we're always focusing on what's wrong too, but also that's really great. Like it makes me smile when I see the comment sections in some videos. In other videos, I'm like, oh my God, we're doing Yeah, some of them are a train wreck. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you know, on the good ones, man, it, the community support and the fact that you don't know where these people are. It could be like somebody struggling. It could be a CEO commenting. It could be like a fireman. Yeah. It could be a policeman. It could be a senator. You don't know who's actually on the comments. You right. know, it's just people tuning into your journey. Yeah, it's been really cool. And I was actually pissed when YouTube removed the thumbs down thing because first of all, it's just stupid. But I, I was so proud of the fact that almost constantly I'd have a video with a 99% up. Yeah. And I was like, this is awesome. Like so many people are into this. Yeah. And then you read comments and it's like just positive, positive, positive constantly. And it's, yeah. it's, oh, it's been amazing. And there's been times, honestly, too, I've, I've told people this in other videos and I, I just want to say it again, cause it's true. There's times, you know, I, maybe I'm having a bad day. Maybe I'm just tired. If I can, you know, YouTube blocked my fourth video and I want to edit it again and all this shit. There have been times when I'm just, kind of down and I go and read the comments and it picks me back up again. That's beautiful. Um, you have a kid. Does he listen to What kind of music does he listen to? He's mostly rock. He mostly listens to what I listen to, but he has been dipping his toe into some Kanye a little bit. He really likes, as funny as it's going to sound, he really likes the song Black Skinhead. <laughs> He like loves a, if he likes rock, that's the... Oh, yeah. And that's what he says all the time. He says, Papa, man, I just love the drums in that song. <laughs> Go for it, dude. Listen it to it. It hits so hard. Oh, it's great. It's great. Uh, what was the other one? He just... God, I forgot. But he bounces around. You know, we have... Uh, what kind of rock do you guys listen to currently? Like at the house, what's on your playlist? Typically like Chevelle, Tool, Queens of the Stone Age, Led Zeppelin, Floyd, Rush, you know... Uh, who else have been listening to lately? Sometimes Nine Inch Nails, Mastodon, a lot of Mastodon. Um, How's the rock scene now? Is there any new, when was the last new rock song that you liked? Chevelle's album last year was oh, yeah? amazing. Oh yeah. I oh really Chevelle, they had that. that song, The Red, back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was their big one that put them on the map and they've just been consistently putting out pretty good albums. Their last three have been Actually, last four have been pretty damn good, in my opinion. I've really liked them. But last year, they put out a good one. 
Tool finally released one after 13 years. Tool released an album in 2019. That that's been great to listen to. Is is rock music as a genre still outputting the level of great music that you like about it from the era that you like? Um, you know, it's 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 kind of weird. I don't ex- I don't explore that much, which is strange. Mm. I feel like I should explore more because. Every time I do, I find somebody I like and I go, why, how come I didn't listen to these guys before? But like right now with rock, with me, there's only a couple bands that are still active that I really enjoy. So like Tool, Queens of the Stone Age, Chevelle, Macedon, those four are probably my favorite that are still producing music. But I think Tool might be getting close to being done. Don't tell any of the Tool fans that because they'll lose their (laughs) mind. (laughs) Queens of the Stone Age... I think they're kind of on a break right now, although I, they might be on tour in Europe this year. They're great. My, my wife and I saw them. They opened up for Nine Inch Nails at a show that we went to a long time ago. And at the time, I wasn't really a huge fan. I hadn't taken the time to listen to music. We enjoyed their opening act so much, my wife actually forgot we were there to see Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they crushed That's it. amazing. Oh, they just crushed it. They were so good live. So, And my son actually has said, we got to go see Queens of the Stone Age. He really likes them. He wants to see them live. He hasn't been to a show yet, so I want to take him to a show. It's been tough with all the pandemic shit going on. Hopefully that's going away soon, but yeah. he wants to see them really bad. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I can relate to you on what you're saying in that I, I tend to listen to the same music over and over, but whenever I do catch something new, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's great. I should listen to more of that artist, right? But I think from a sense of certainty, I just, I just have like my like six go-to artists and albums and they just yeah. stay on repeat. Yeah. Well, it's tough because you know, when you want to listen to music, especially when you're in that certain mood, like I'm in a mood, I want to hear this. Mm-hmm. If you're exploring, you might not find that. And so sometimes you got to just go to what you know, because that's the, that's the mood you're in at the time. But then other times, you know, I've also noticed it kind of depends on what, what service you're using. Like I just switched from Spotify to Tidal. Um, nice. nothing to do with Rogan. It was strictly because somebody had mentioned it and I had forgotten that I wanted to look into other services and title pays the artists a lot more. Yeah. So I, I like that. I want the artist to get paid. And you know, Jay-Z did that. Oh, did he? He owns title. Oh, I didn't know that. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. 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 He, he bought it and sold it. Yeah. That, 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 that's his whole move. That's he, oh. that, and he make, had a bunch of other artists, um, own a share of it as well. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Title no, I, is like the one that pays out really well yeah and, that, and that's why i switch and it's cool because they have a family plan so my son and my wife can have their own accounts going and stuff like that but what i like about title is you can click on a, an album or a track and then you can find other things that are like it's kind of like uh pandora folded into a spotify oh you know i haven't seen that feature so it just yeah. like almost you like can, the radio function but like right right, right. on it yeah, and so I, I look at title, I go, shit, I'm going to be able to find a lot more new stuff I haven't listened to just because they're, they're constantly feeding me. With Spotify, I found all the time, it was always recommending me all the stuff I've already heard, like all the stuff that's already in my playlist. There was nothing new ever being recommended. It was really annoying. I, did, I do catch that on Spotify too. Whenever I do a radio of a track, it just gives me other songs that, I, that they know I listen to. That yeah. just like that one. I'm like, no. There's nothing new. Other stuff. And I, I find too, because I love making playlists. I found if I start making a playlist, you could you know hit the the suggested songs at the bottom and you could like refresh it to cycle through. It would just keep re- repeating like the same 25 songs. It wouldn't suggest anything new. It was really annoying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Things, things to make you ponder. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, as we're, we're uh, how long have we been doing this? Oh, an hour. We've got a lot. A, we've rocked a lot in an hour. Um, I guess I just want to touch on the last couple of things. Are you optimistic for the future? Oh, I, uh, I'm generally a pretty pessimistic person. <laughs> um, I don't know. I want to be optimistic. Uh, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of things going on with different governments right now. There's tensions. Uh, you know, I look at economic states with you know inflation like 7.5 percent year over year for january um yeah i don't know man i don't know you know it, the, the nice thing about being pessimistic is that often i'm proven wrong 
Mm. And I, I'm very happy to be proven wrong. And <laughs> I, I, I think, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I want to be optimistic. It's, it's nice that continually people in general show me that I shouldn't be as pessimistic as I am. There's a great line from uh, Tom Petty. The song's Crawling Back to You. And, and uh, the line goes, most things that I worry about never happen anyway. And mm. I like that line. Every now and then I just hum that line to myself because it's, it's true. I'll worry about things. And it's like, you know what? It's probably not going to happen anyway. So just don't worry so much. That's a great line. <laughs> it's so simple and it just captures it. Yeah. What is it? I'm so tired of being tired. Sure as night will follow day. Most things I worry about never happen anyway. Mm. Yeah. They say that, that, that a coward dies a thousand deaths, right? Yeah. Greatest man only once. It's, you know, we spend a lot more time anticipating something than experiencing it, right? Like even something like, you know, Christmas, right? Like Christmas itself is a day, but yeah. the experience leading up to it, like, like it's all prep. It's all like the anticipation. Yeah. Anticipation is a big one. My son, he, he got his first set of stitches last summer and he was hoping he did not have to get stitches and he turned out he did and he was mm. freaking out because of the anticipation. And I told him, dude, honestly, right now, where you are now, this fear that you're experiencing about having to get stitches, this is the worst part. <laughs> when you actually get the stitches, it's gonna last about 20 minutes, it'll sting for the first three and you're done. Like this yeah. is the worst part, having to sit here in the waiting room, freaking out, you know, imagining the horrible pain and the, the terrible experience that you're gonna have. This is the worst part. When it actually happens, it's usually not that bad. Skydiving is the same way. I've never been. I've never been. But I imagine skydiving has a hell of an anticipation period. <laughs> Dude, I, I've gone nine times. And every time it's the same thing. The way up, I'm like, oh, yeah. shit. The yeah. second you're actually doing the thing, you're chilling. Like once you're out of the plane, you're like, oh, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's the rinky-dink Prius with wings that takes you up there. You jump out of, you know. <laughs> you really yeah. feel the, the turbulence on that. Oh, um, that's funny. Okay, so final two questions. Um, for people that are big hip-hop fans that don't listen to any rock. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Who would you recommend us listen to? You can either give us albums or songs, but from you, from things that you like. If you have never listened to rock and you love hip hop, you must, must listen to Rage Against the Machine. You oh, must. Oh, yes. I love them. That's to a me, great, that's a great suggestion. Oh, to me, Rage Against the Machine is a super highway that should be connecting rock and hip hop. It's yes. like one of my favorite things to do is to go on and watch people react to Rage Against the Machine. Because it's just phenomenal every time, every experience, everybody loves it. Oh, and they represent the feeling, that angst. Oh, God. And you know what, what is totally heartbreaking is, you know, when it was 94, I think was their debut album. I mean, they're, they're 90s, right? So 25 years ago, their lyrics are just as true today as they've ever been. Probably more so. They have so many good songs. Oh, my God. I, I, you know, I'm a skater and I love skating to their music. Like it just, it gives me so, so much energy. They are like, they do have the, the energy of hip hop. Oh my God, dude. They're totally you hip hop. Know? Like there's one guy, I can't remember his, his channel name, but he's like, this isn't rock. <laughs> this is hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The lyrical content where oh, yeah. he's coming from the beats. Like it's, uh, musically that hits hard. Yeah. And then Tom Morello is just such an amazing guitarist. Amazing yeah. guitarist. And it's funny because when I was younger, I used to skate to Rage Against the Machine, not knowing really what the lyrics were talking about. Yeah. But now I re-listen to it and I'm like, yo, they yeah. were like <laughs> trying to get canceled back then. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think, what was it? Uh, Denzel Curry did a cover of Bulls on Parade, I believe. So anybody who's a fan of Denzel Curry should definitely check out all of Rage Against the Machine stuff. Okay. So after them... Who else should hip hop heads listen to in the rock world? That's an amazing suggestion. Interesting. So after Rage, and let's say they're into Rage, you know, it's it's weird because rock, it splinters out so much. You know, mm. it, it really goes in. You've got, you know, what I just consider rock. You've got classic rock. You've got hard rock. You've got metal. You've got industrial. There's this stuff called like stoner rock, which is just super heavy, distorted riffs and stuff. Okay. From there. 
So, oh, go ahead. So, so then let's, because it's funny, because when people ask me for hip hop songs, I say the same thing. I'm like, well, what do you want? You want a party song? You want right. to cry? Yeah. You want to be in love? Okay, so, so let's go just by, um, in terms of music, in terms of melodies and the way it sounds in the really good speakers, like something you can just get lost in. Oh, what God. I mean, to me, that just screams Pink Floyd right there. Mm. Some, some of the Pink Floyd albums are incredible. I don't Dark think I've heard of the- any Pink Floyd. Oh, dude, Dark Side of the Moon, Shine On You Crazy, or Wish You Were Here. The opening track, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, is incredible. The whole album's incredible. Um, who else is great sonically like that? Pink Definitely Floyd. Pink Floyd. Definitely Pink Floyd. If you're, if you're trying to come at it from like a, a production perspective, with, yeah. yeah, you want that sound, yeah, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. If you, I can't believe you've never listened to Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, oh, un- unless I accidentally play it on Guitar Hero or something, like that would be my only other encounter with yeah. it. Oh, dude, dark, yeah, Dark Side of the Moon. Wish you were here. Dark, is that an album or is that a song? Uh, both dark of those are side, albums. Dark, dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here. Yeah. Wish you were here. Dark Side, you'll probably recognize the cover. It's an iconic cover. It's that prism with the light coming out and then the rainbow coming out the other side. Oh, okay, that's, that's where it comes from. Yeah. Nice. I like that. It's funny because when people ask for that in hip hop, I would tell them Twisted Fantasy. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I get to do that one next month. I'm looking forward to that one. That's coming. Oh. That's coming. That's Th- that coming. one is the magnum opus. That one is the most, like, if people are so like, I don't like hip hop, it's like, <laughs> hear that one. <laughs> it should be played at like a concert hall with like an orchestra. It's like, a, that is like the full musical. Oh, cool. As big and as perfect as hip-hop could sound, basically. You know? that's, and then that's awesome. That's why Yeezus was such a, a fuck you. Because basically the story goes that you know, what he, he went on stage with Taylor Swift. Oh, that yeah. whole incident happened. Right. He got canceled. He went away for a couple of years, came back with Twisted Fantasy to be like, sorry, guys, here's a perfect album. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> huh. And then it, it just completely revolutionized hip-hop again. And then after that, he got so much love for making it so melodic that then he said, fuck you, here's Yeezus. Interesting. And then Yeezus was like, I'm going to pr- show you that. no, Because Yeezus, even the opening track on site, it yeah. sounds so jarring on purpose. Because he even said in an interview, he's like, I could have opened it with Blood on the Leaves, which is like the, the melodic build oh, of that yeah, album. Sure. And that would have been the safe thing to do. He's like, no, I'm going to prove to you I'm going to go a different way on purpose. Yeah. Like, th- those two albums back to back are, are very... Um, as opposite as could be. Interesting. I didn't realize that about Dark Fantasy. I didn't know that. Yeah. There's, there's a great YouTube channel called The Most Unruly. Um, oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah. He makes independent music documentaries where he'll break down an album and like visual, like the interviews, who, ha- who made it. It's like these really, really engaging music docs on all kinds of artists. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. So Pink Floyd, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. One more. Let's see. It Who comes from hip hop. Really like? I would I would suggest uh, Queens of the Stone Age, and I know that's a, that's a strange name for a band, but Queens of the Stone Age, especially their most recent album, but the last two, Villains and um, Like Clockwork, those two albums I felt were really good, yeah. and there's a lot of variety in those two albums. Um, a couple tracks with piano that are really slow and mellow and some great rock jams in there and just great band, really great band. Really enjoyed them through the year. They've been around for a while too. And it, them and Chevelle, they just keep getting better. Oh, Chevelle, so, yeah. yeah. Chevelle's I haven't, I haven't heard them in forever. They, they had the theme song to one of my favorite skate videos when I started skating back in the oh, day. Oh yeah, yeah. And I remember the trick would land right when it was like, it was like, <laughs> and yeah. it got cemented into my mind. Yeah. It's like, that's the hype song. So Chevelle. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah, um, and then finally, for the for the people out there who uh, don't listen to hip hop, yeah, and are curious, what message would you have for them? However, you want to say it, whether it's about the culture or any albums in particular. I know you you just started your journey, but I love watching it. So, what message do you have for those people that are curious about hip hop? I would I would say if you're if you're really gonna do it, if you're really gonna sit down and listen to it. I mean, obviously an open mind, that's step one, but I would say you got to have the lyrics in front of you. You got to take the time to listen to what these guys are saying, because 
what there was one thing I really did experience with this journey is there's a lot of barriers to entry. One of them is just rap. Because if you come from a rock world or any other portion of musical space, you're not used to somebody using their voice that way. You're not used to that vocal style. And so it can throw you off. Even my son says that. He's like, I like the sound, but I, I'm just not used. To, the guy sounds weird. Yeah. It's not like he, dis- he doesn't like it, but he's just not used to it. And it, it took me a while to just get used to rap and people doing that. And then it's kind of a combination because if you jump in and you're not used to rap and you're not used to that style, and then it seems like they're going so fast and you can't understand what they're saying. Well, now you don't know what they're saying. And then you get kind of twisted up on that, that you're not really paying attention to the music. So if you have the lyrics in front of you, it lets your brain like relax a little bit. Like it's not mm. working so hard at trying to track all of these different That's things that are point. new, you know? So you can, at least you can understand what they're saying. And then as the lyrics start to fold in, then you can appreciate the sound. I mean, that's my process anyway. Some people do sound first and then lyrics, but just just being able to read what they're saying is a huge step, I think. And then you can actually know, oh, wow. Wow, this person's like saying all these things. I had no idea this ever existed in, in the music to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Partly because it's it's hard to catch sometimes because they rap so fast. Yeah. Or or it's coded in slang that's, that's ever another... changing and hyper specific to like East Coast slang that even people from the West Coast might not even get. If, even if they are into hip hop, it's double and tri- triple entendres. It's like an Easter egg. No, not the Easter yeah. egg. What's that? The, those those oh, eggs. those Russian dolls. Those Russian dolls. Yeah. That do, 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 you know, it, it's uh, a lot of that happened. Like you worded it perfectly. A barrier of entry. The, the slang and the, uh, that's another one too, because there were so many, like when I did the whole lot of red album, <laughs> there were so many things. I had no idea what he was talking about half the time. And it wasn't even because of uh, like not understanding them. I've got the lyrics in front of me, but I don't know what, uh, what is it? Pro th- like this, this, this lean drink or whatever, you know, the, they pour. Uh, oh the yeah. Mixed drink. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't, I didn't know what that was. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, he's referencing different fashion lines and clothes. I don't know what that shit is. He's referencing art artists. I don't know who they are. Like, there's all these references, like pop culture references, fashion references, all these different references. I'm like, I don't know who any of these. I don't know what these are. <laughs> and, and see, and that's that's the interesting difference between like rock, or I guess most other kinds of music and hip hop, right? Is because you can walk into a good rock show, never having heard the album before, and it's sounding good. Because the melodies are there and it's structured in a way that's simple and you can feel. And either you collect with the frequency or you don't, right? But with yeah. hip hop, y- you almost have to invest more into it to you do. really appreciate it. It's a culture. That's really what it is. It is a culture, and that's something I've come to learn. Is it's not just music. It is a culture. And that's where um, 808s was more like on the music side and less rap. Yeah. 808s is less about the lyrics. That's just the vibe. Like 808s, honestly, to me, sounds better at night. Like you have to oh, be yeah. like at night, uh, like to, if, if you're going to be listening to it for the next week, right? Yep. For, yep. I am. I would suggest when you're like about to go to sleep or like, like, in, like in a very chill, like just like relaxing. If you're in an analytical thinking mind, that album doesn't hit as good. Like it took me a while to like really understand that that one is like a. It's an emotional just melting yeah. coming out of you. Even the way it starts, so slow. Boom, boom. Yeah, da, yeah. Da, that da, opening da, track da, is slow. Yeah. It's not coffee music. <laughs> it's <Right>. like <laughs> I'm about to fall asleep and just like let all these feelings come out of me. <laughs> it's that. So I, w- I would recommend that as well to to know that there's a set and setting for certain kinds of music on both sides, right? There's of a course. time and place for rock music. There's of a time course. and place for Sade. I like listening to Frank Sinatra sometimes. It's like, oh, yeah. it, there's, a, there's a set for it, you know? And I think some albums just sound better at night. Yeah, yeah. I can totally get that. I, I, I also listen to ambient music. And so there's a lot of times in the yeah. evening, I'll just put on some ambient, dark ambient stuff and just chill. Yeah, awesome, dude. Well, man. I'm really glad we were able to sit down and chat. Me too. That was a, fun. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you reached out. And yeah, this is great. I had, a, I had a wonderful time. Um, I'm so excited for you, man, to continue going on this journey. And I'm glad that people like you are popping up all over the internet, you know, and that and are being brave to go on either side of the journey, right? Whether it's rock or hip hop or 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 Republican, Democrat, or whatever. Just like people just exposing themselves to other perspectives. Yeah. 
we got to find a way to come together. That's all there is to it. We have to find some way to come together. Otherwise, we we because we are right now. I feel like we are being torn apart. It's not a will be. We are being torn apart. So we got to find common ground wherever we can. Yeah, dude. Thank you once again, Bob My the pleasure. Pop Pop. Check him out on YouTube. <laughs>